Hi there, Roger Hunkler, owner and inventor of MagnaShade. In today's short video, I'm going to share with you some of the things I do to prepare for a trip, as well as some of the things I do en route. I think you'll find this informative, and maybe just one thing will help you from having a disaster on the road. All right, so the most important thing I consider is tire pressure and tires. I'm a stickler about tires and tire pressure. Before going on a trip, you need to check and make sure that all your tire pressures are correct. You also want to look for sidewall cracks. And while you're at it, make sure you have no fluid leakage. If you have a diesel coach uh, around the front hubs coming from that seal. So you're looking for any damage to the tire. And a real good tip is to get down behind the motorhome and look between your dual wheels. And I do this at every single time I get, go to a rest stop. Because you may develop a bubble on the sidewall from a damage, something you ran over, that you are not going to see from the outside. So look between your dual wheels and make sure you don't have any sidewall bubbles um, or any obstructions in there you picked up from the road. Cracks in the rims, any damage to the rims, or maybe a loose wheel nut. It's just something you want to visually check. Real important to do that. If you don't have a tire management system, tire pressure management system, I suggest you get one. And you can buy these from various sources. We'll actually link a source for you on our website and um, or on this video. Uh, something I strongly suggest. The next thing I always check, and primarily this is before I get into drive, is I do a complete walk around the motorhome. I'm going to check the roof line. I know you've all seen satellite dishes up on motorhomes going down the road, and you've seen antennas up. Don't rely on your dash uh, to tell you that that uh, is down. Uh, when I put my satellite dish down, it says it's stowed, but I physically check it. I get out of the motorhome, I look and make sure it actually is physically stowed. You want to look, make sure your awnings, you don't have any windows open, and um, just give it a good look around on the outside. Every time I stop at a rest area, I do a complete walk around in my motorhome to make sure everything is the way it should be. So the next thing I do is make sure my slide out trays and my bays are locked. Now you may have been in that tray and closed it and it didn't really lock and then you close your bay door, you go down the road, go around a corner and then 300 pounds of stuff on that tray force that door open, which I've, I've heard of it happening, I've seen it happen, it happened to me once and only once. So part of my curriculum now is to make sure all those trays are securely locked and then follow up making sure the bay doors are locked. And I physically will check them to make sure that it truly is locked. Sometimes you may close a bay door and you might think it's closed when in actuality it's not. So it's very important to check all those bay doors. Now that's a simple thing, but sometimes, you know, if we've been on the road a lot and we have a lot of experience, we tend to overlook the little things. So that's an important step before departing. Now when I travel, I always leave with full fresh water tanks and if I have a dump available I make sure my tanks are empty. Now some guys may argue with me on that and they say hey you know just fill it up put 20 gallons in save weight. Quite honestly whether it's a gas motorhome or a diesel motorhome the motorhome knows no difference where you're carrying that extra 350-400 pounds of weight. The reason you want to travel with a full water tank and I'll explain why. Uh, several years ago I was uh, going to Indiana. I had just fueled up I was climbing a mountain around Princeton, West Virginia, and my fan clutch came apart. Luckily, I got it off the side of the road, and behind me, to my luck, was a 100-foot cement pad where they keep heavy equipment. So when the DOT got there, they said, do you think you can back up on that pad? And I said, yeah, let me let it cool down, disconnected. I backed it up on the pad. I was there on the side of the road for five days while parts were being ordered, and a mechanic came out and fixed the fan clutch. I had a full tank of water, I had a full tank of fuel, I had empty tanks, I could have been there for 10 days with no problems at all. So if you're thinking about uh, just carrying 20 gallons to save weight, it really doesn't matter, fill the tank up. That way if you do have a problem on the road, you've got plenty of water and you're not going to be stuck there. It'll be like camping on the side of the road because you've got everything you need in the motorhome. 
So that's a great tip from me. If you don't think it's a great tip, that's okay. I've been there, done that. And I would say leave with a full tank of fresh water. Another item that's overlooked sometimes is battery connections. You want to make sure that your connections are tight and clean. So if you see that corrosion on there, just make sure before you go, either uh, clean the connections. Uh, you can use baking soda and Coca-Cola or baking soda and vinegar and rinse it off really good. Uh, that's real important too because uh, most problems that happen electrically are due to corrosion or a bad ground. And I've been in the industry so long and in the automotive industry before that, that uh, I've found that most of the time you're gonna have an electrical issue is because of a bad ground, that's number one. So check your batteries uh, and also your house batteries as well to make sure those connections are tight and clean. So on the back of the motorhome, if you're towing, there's some things you really need to check out. You need to look at these things closely before departing and I always look at these items I'm gonna show you here. Uh, when en route. So when I stop at a rest area or stop to eat, I always make these checks. I'll give everything kind of a kick here with my foot to make sure that the, the items attached to the front of the tow vehicle are tight. I also check the welds. Now there's several welds not only on the tow bar, but there are welds on your receiver. Uh, one time years ago, a few motorhomes ago, I was driving into Houston, Texas at night in the rain, got to my destination and when I got out to disconnect, there was about one inch of steel holding that tow vehicle on my hitch. The hitch weld had actually broken and uh, luckily I made it. So I always look at my welds on the hitch and the receiver to make sure that there are no cracks in the welds. And sometimes if, a, if you do receive a crack on a weld, it'll pop the paint or there'll be a, an obvious rust line at that crack. So give everything a little pressure with your foot, look at all your welds make sure everything is in here securely. The other thing is don't assume that your lights on your tow vehicle are gonna work because they did the last time. You need to check those every time you hook up. So get in the motor home, turn your lights on, check your signals. If you're by yourself, you're just gonna have to jump out and check it. Um, that's real important because sometimes, you know, when things fail, they fail at one time. So get out, make sure your lights are good. Also check your tires, pressures on your tow vehicle. There again, if uh, you don't have sensors, you should have sensors for your tow vehicle so that if you do have a tire going down in the back, it'll alert you before it comes apart on the road. That'll save you a lot of, a lot of stress on the road. I've had that happen. So have your, uh, your tow vehicle uh, tire monitor system as well. Additionally, uh, talking about tow bars, you want to make sure that you have your tow bar uh, regardless of the brand serviced on a regular basis. You know, for me, I service mine at least a couple times a year because we travel so much. That's one important thing you can do, whether it's a Blue Ox or another brand, have it serviced. A lot of the rallies, uh, FMCA, Newmar, uh, Tiffin, or any of the other rallies, a lot of times they're going to have a rep there that will come out and service the tow bar. All right, so talking about your chassis and engine. So before you go, you want to check your coolant level, your oil level, your transmission level. You just want to check those fluids because it's much easier to take care of this situation in your driveway than it is on the side of I-40 or I-20 or in the pouring rain at a rest area. Uh, you want to check uh, any other fluids. Now this coach uses an Oasis heating system, so I always check to make sure my boiler fluid is at the proper level. You have a gauge here for uh, your coolant level, and that uses an antifreeze that is red. Uh, engine, uh, engine and transmission levels. Another thing that you should always do is carry one or two spare fan belts. Now I've had fan belts break. Uh, actually I actually had two at one time. I carried four. This was on a motorhome a few years ago where I had a fan clutch problem and it was chewing up my uh, belts. Well, that fourth belt got me to the destination. So you want to have spare fan belts. That's real important. You also want to carry extra oil and antifreeze. Uh, and uh, I would suggest carrying also an extra fuel filter uh, with you when you do that. Because sometimes you may pick up poor fuel or bad fuel. And uh, I've heard many times where the fuel filter was plugged or contained water. 
and you can change that on the road if you have to. So that's important to carry an extra fuel filter on a diesel. Doesn't hurt to carry one in a gas coach as well. As well as the uh, fluid levels on your engine, uh, I always carry uh, extra def with me. Now on this particular motorhome, the def fill is on the left side in the back. Uh, the fuel fill is in the front. So what I do is I always carry uh, two and a half gallons of def in the bay. I use that. I fill that def tank up, uh, the, an empty def package up at the fuel pump and carry it with me. And then when I stop, I fill it up and that way you don't have to go through the trouble of moving the motor home forward to fill the def on the opposite side, especially when you have a trucker sitting behind you waiting and he thinks you're leaving. So just carry some extra def if you use def in your motor home and you can always fill it at the pump. It's also cheaper to do that and uh, you're going to be using it the next day or the next two days. So it's not going to go bad. I do that all the time. It works great. The next thing to talk about is fuel stop safety, and this is uh, for rest areas as well. Anytime you exit your motorhome, but especially at fuel stops, you're going to be out there for a little while, so I always put my back against the motorhome. This gives me peripheral vision. Typically, if somebody approaches you, they may want to draw your attention, and somebody else will come at you from behind, may want to take your wallet, they may have a knife or a gun. So this is a good way to make sure that you're not distracted to the point where somebody else can, can approach you. Keep your back against the, the motorhome like this, and when you're done, you'll be safe. But there's a lot of things that can happen in rest areas. There's a lot of things that can happen at fuel stops. I've been in those situations. That's why I practice what I practice. I don't want to be approached again where I feel my life is threatened. And whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you have gray hair, blue hair, if you're 20 years old traveling or you're 90 years old. It's a good practice. Always be aware of your surroundings, but this is a good one for when you're fueling at a fuel stop. A few other items to check before you leave is to make sure your washer hoses are not deteriorated or loose. Um, and also make sure these nuts are tight on your wiper arms. I have literally had wiper arms come off. So this is many, many years ago. Uh, they will come loose and the last, the last thing you need is for one of those to come loose in a driving rain because you're not going to find out until then. So make sure that these are torqued properly. Check your wiper blades to make sure the rubber's good um, and carry a set of spare blades. Keep them in the bay with you. Sometimes it's not easy to find uh, some of these larger wipers and you may not be able to stop and get them but you can certainly pull them out of your bay and change them if you need to. The other thing to do in the front is check your washer fluid, make sure your washer fluid is full and that the uh, container's not damaged and that the hoses going to it are good. These are things you should check occasionally just to make sure that you have a safe trip. If you leave your driveway or you leave your, your uh, pad knowing that you checked all these items, you can leave in confidence. Of course, anything can happen, but at least you know you've done all you can to make this trip and your next trip a safer one. A couple of items in the cockpit area that I absolutely would not do without. Number one is a dash cam. If you don't have a dash cam in your car, your motorhome, if you're towing a fifth wheel in your truck, uh, I would get one. I wouldn't wait. I'd order it now because that, that will save you tons of grief if there's ever an accident. And sometimes you'll pick up somebody else's accident and save them. So that's something you definitely need. In a motorhome, I always have CBs. I don't talk on it, but what's really great about having a CB is I do monitor it. If you get into a situation where uh, traffic's coming to a stop three miles, four miles ahead, you'll hear the truckers talk about it. You'll be prepared because they're going to give you the mile marker. That way you're not going to come up on something and not expect it. You'll be ready for it. So always have a CB. And it's also good when you're in heavy traffic because the truckers will talk if there's an accident, which lane to get into, which lane to avoid. It's just a great thing to have. Make sure that if you install a CB in your motorhome that you use a fire stick antenna and an NGP no ground planed uh, system because a motorhome obviously doesn't have the ground plane to reach out or receive. So make sure you get a fire stick, uh, NGP antenna and coax and then you can tune it and it'll work fine. 
Lastly, uh, in the cockpit area, I'm a stickler for clean glass. Uh, make sure that your glass is clean before you depart. Clean it often going down the road uh, as a road film and you might run into some spray. Uh, you don't notice so much in the daytime, but at nighttime if you're driving, it makes it very difficult, especially in high traffic areas where there's a lot of lighting or in cities that you're going through, you get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of reflection back off what's on the windshield. So keep your mirrors clean. Something you should always do is clean your mirrors, make sure they're clean at rest areas. The inside and outside of your glass should be cleaned and uh, it just makes it a much more enjoyable trip. Uh, now, some of the things I use, I actually can, I actually use Behold furniture polish on the mirrors in the motorhome, on the glass, it works great. Uh, you can also use it on the outside of the glass. So uh, that's just a little tip from somebody that was in the industry a long time ago cleaning motorhomes when he was 15 years old. Well, that's it for this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you found at least one thing that you can check on your rig before you travel to make it a safer trip and a more enjoyable trip. And give us some comments in the section below. If there's something I missed or something you do that's important for the other RVers watching this, please post it below. And don't forget to check our website, MagnaShade, that's M-A-G-N-E, shade.com. Find out where we're going to be at the next rally or event. And look at our awesome products, our new magnetic drop shade, especially for the uh, automatic awnings with the self-detaching method. Our windshield shades, side shades, tire shades, nano shades. We've got a lot of great products for the RV industry and nobody bakes a better product than MagnaShade. And it's made in the USA right here in North Carolina. So until the next time, safe travels.